Hi guys, let's have a look at how to restore and recolor old family photos in Affinity Photo on the iPad. It can be done on the desktop, probably a little bit easier, but on the iPad, it's certainly interesting. So let's see how to repair, tidy and hand color a faded vintage print in Affinity Photo on the iPad. Easily done on the desktop and you can bring your old family photos to life again. Many of us will have old family photos and vintage prints tucked away at home. So now might be the perfect time to dig them out, brush them off and digitise them with a scanner or your camera. Once done, you can open the image in Affinity Photo to, to perform all kinds of impressive restoration work and breathe new life into these beloved old prints. Given, given a little time and attention, we can reverse the ravages of time and restore our prints to their former glory. In this case, load the image that you've selected and the image we're using is from the stock studio on the in Affinity Photo on the iPad, so it's easily, to lo easily locatable. In this project, I'll explain how it's done. I'll start by using Affinity Photo's in-painting tool to tidy up the print. The portrait here is very faded, but I can bring back definition to the faces with subtle dodging and burning. And once the grime is removed and the tones are improved, I could leave it at that. But if I want to go one step further, I can add a hand-coloured treatment. And this is done with a simple combination of layer blending modes and painting. Simply build up the colours on different layers and experiment with shades until everything comes together. So fix marks and scratches to start with. Most old photos are covered in scratches and marks and in painting is absolutely perfect to fix this. Open the portrait, go to the layers panel and tap new layer icon. Now grab the in painting tool from the toolbar. Go to the context toolbar and set current layer and below. Now this is fairly important otherwise you're working on the image directly. Paint over scratches to remove them. Use pinch or and with your fingers to zoom in or out and resize the brush as needed. Start with the white snow dot effect in this image if you found it on Pixabay I think it was in the studio. Tap the Adjustment Studio icon in the Studio Panels and choose Black and White from the drop-down list. And it's right at the top. Changes the image to pure black and white. Next, tap the Adjustment Studio again and choose Levels. You now have two new adjustment layers. In the Context Toolbar, drag the black and white adjustment to boost the contrast then use the Gamma option to control the overall brightness of the picture. I used 15, 75 and 1.5 respectively in this image. And you can see those in the context toolbar there. Now dodge and burn the faces. This doesn't work quite so well on this image, but you can probably select your own images. I'm sure you've got a huge collection of old family photos there that you can scan and work on. We're going to use the dodge and burn tools to add some definition. First, to merge a copy of all the layers, select all the layers and then from the layers menu select the plus sign and tap merge visible. This creates a new layer above all the others and you can work on this layer. Visible layers can also be set in the layers command menu. Select your new layer. Select the burn tool and set the tonal range, mid-tones, opacity 5% and paint under the chin, cheekbones and lips of the faces to deepen the shadows. Now as I mentioned on this image there's not a lot of work to do there um, and it's quite difficult to get to and it only works on areas that are already slightly dark but you'll work this out as you go along. This is not a five minute job restoring old photos. Use the dodge tool to lift the forehead, cheeks and nose. The outcome will depend very much on your original image. Now, paint the clothes. This is the fun bit. 
make a new layer, then click the Blend Mode drop-down at the top of the Layers panel and change it from Normal to Colour. Select the Brush tool and choose a colour. Then begin painting over the kilt, for example, to apply the colour. Adjust the colour options. It's likely going to be far too strong, so go to the Layers panel and lower the layer opacity to gently tone it down. And you can see I've got the opacity set to about 63% there. Make another new layer. Again, set it to the colour blending mode and then paint a colour for the skin. Now we can't import colour swatches into the iPad version yet, but we can select the colour we require from another image. So, download the skin colour swatch image from my download website and select colours from that with the colour picker and create and add to your own swatch palette. So you can actually create your own palette and add colours to it, but you just can't import them. Now we've got a whole range of skin tones there that you can apply to the figures in your images. Continue adding more layers to build up the colours. <coughs> colours, excuse me. If a colour looks too light, try duplicating the layer and changing the blending mode to multiply to darken the areas. Then lower the opacity to suit. Enhance the colours. Click the adjustment layer icon in the layers panel and add a selective colour adjustment. Then target and darken the blues using the context toolbar below. I've got red selected there, but you'll be looking for the blues. Perhaps. Add a curves adjustment and plot an S-shaped curved line to add contrast. And you can see that's added quite a bit of contrast to that image. Probably too much, really. But you can adjust that to suit your image. Finally, add a vibrance adjustment and increase vibrance and saturation, again in the context toolbar. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of work to do in that image yet, but I've begun working on the child in the centre of the photograph rather than the entire photograph because I wanted to show you really how easy it is to begin adjusting old photographs. There's a couple of great tips here. The first stage in restoring old photos is to digitise them. This is best done with a scanner. If you don't have one, you could take a shot of the print with your camera. Now this is quite, a, quite an interesting idea. Keep the light even, ideally with two lamps either side of the print at 45 degrees. Use a tripod to keep it very steady. Shoot at a very low ISO, like ISO 100, to keep noise to a minimum. And select a mid-range aperture, such as f8, as this is where lenses tend to be at their sharpest. So digitise your old photo, open the image in Affinity Photo, crop, straighten or rotate the image, review your photo for any corrections you want to make, make the necessary adjustments to your image, apply a filter to reduce noise if you like, and save the newly restored image. And that's just the beginning. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and click on the thumbs up to like. I really appreciate it and it helps me count.